Hi everyone, here's the book Amis once again, and with Purity I actually completed the uh, list of books I would read in 2016 as listed in the video I filmed about a year ago, books I will read in 2016. The only ones I eventually didn't read are The Light Fantastic and Equal Rights by Terry Pratchett, but nobody's perfect. And that's the that's a first for me, because the list of books I would read in 2015, I didn't even touch a single one of those, so I'm glad I could, you know, achieve my goals. As for purity, the book is kind of shit. Take this review with a pinch of salt, because you know the uh, Philip Roth aphorism, if it takes you more than two weeks to read a book, you haven't actually read the book at all. I believe in it. I mean, I, I believe it's of course an exaggeration. I read books, it took me like one month or two months to finish, and I would actually say I read it. But I believe there is some truth inside that, that phrase about the nature of, you know, literature and reading. And it doesn't, it didn't took me uh, two weeks to read Purity, it took me more than a year, I think, because I ordered this book when it came out, actually, I pre-ordered it on Amazon, and I started reading it as soon as it, ah, what a, what a fucking coffin, as soon as it came out, I read the first 200 pages in the span of two afternoons, and then I stopped because it kind of sucked. These last few days I went through the rest of the book and it didn't really change my first impression, even though of course there's lots to be uh, appreciated inside this book and of course Jonathan Franzen, technically speaking, is one of the most talented writers alive today. The mo my main problem with Purity is that from page one it reads very much like a parody of Jonathan Franzen. Jonathan Franzen is famous for writing books filled with disgusting people doing horrible shit to each other and masturbating randomly for no real reason, and if I had to choose between living in the universe of Jonathan Franzen's novel or in fucking Game of Thrones, I would probably pick Game of Thrones because it looks more peaceful as a place. But here, that, that whole idea reaches new heights. The book literally begins with a girl who has terrible student loans to pay, and her she doesn't know where her father is, and her mother is some kind of a spiritualist, new age nutcase, and this girl lives in a house um, as kind of a half squatter, together with Chu, a, a married couple of religious fundamentalists, like ex extreme Christ like some kind of extreme uh, American Christians, and with a guy who is kind of an obese sociopath, and with a an Hispanic guy who smells like urine, and he might be mentally challenged, and there are also two German squatters living there, and they are uh, political extremists. You know, you, you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. The only thing that would have made it more Franzen is if the main character were in love with one of her housemates and kept having weird sexual thoughts about this guy and tried to seduce him all the time, and maybe there were one or two scenes of bad sex in this place. Except that that stuff is there in the novel too, it's actually there in the very first chapter. Technically speaking, there's lots to appreciate in this novel, and one of the most commendable things about it is the way each of its parts has its own flair and its own vibe. You get some parts in the form of diaries or confessions, there are, you get straight up third person narration, uh, you get some parts, uh, very long passages in set, uh, several decades in the past, actually set in the uh, um, East Germany of the late 80s. And the way that landscape and the ideology of that landscape, the way people thought back there and in that specific socialist country, is very well represented in the book. And the whole depiction of socialist Germany is by far the, the best accomplishment of the novel, if you ask me. Also, for all that this is 100% through and through a work of literary fiction, straight up like canonical literary fiction, it's not like there's no action in it, and there are actually guns coming up uh, here and there. There's a thermonuclear warhead in this book and that's weird because it's exactly what I wanted from the new Jonathan Franzen book. I wanted a book that went back a little to the 27th City, uh, Jonathan Franzen's debut novel, which I loved, which is every, very much a Fran Franzenian novel. Uh, there's are, or, there are already the stuff that will make Franzen famous in the future, his, uh, like his peculiar brand of black humor, the fact that the characters uh, are dicks to each other all the time, but there's also lots of actions, and this book, if you ask me, is primarily a very good thriller. Purity, not so much. As I said, there's some action here, which incidentally also kinda happen 
largely in the chapters set back in socialist Germany, which makes them by far the best part of the book. But it's like the book was a bit afraid of like leaning too much on that narrative device of you know using action, using uh, this kind of stuff to advance the plot, and it doesn't rely on that too heavily. Add to all that that this book features so many reflections about today's world and today's culture and popular culture, and the author is extremely critical to about all that, so that. The internet is death, and women use the internet only to talk about themselves, and guys use the internet only to watch pornography, which is death. And Frozen and other children's movies uh, make, pe make children believe they're special when they're not. Overall, what I got from all these reflections was that, on the one hand, I'm not sure Jonathan Franzen knows the first thing about popular culture, he, he looks like someone who learned about popular culture from reading Marcuse, rather than from enjoying it himself, and on the other end, he appeared to be kind of a stuck-up asshole. Compare someone like Thomas Pynchon, who discusses popular culture um, in a novel such as Bleeding Edge, and like talks extensively about the implicit horrors and the potential for danger that is there in so much of today's popular culture, from the perspective of someone who also can recognize the good in it and the good potential in it, and who most notably clearly loves it anyway. Jonathan Franzen again, completely different perspective. Overall, the problem I have with purity is that to me it feels very, very much like reading, for instance, uh, a bad Ken Follett novel, or a bad, one of the bad Agatha Christie, the few bad Agatha Christie novels, or um, um, a short story collection by someone like Alice Munro, which is that did all of these are kind of very accomplished books, because of course they are written by extremely talented writers, but they are 100% every step of the way genre works. They work precisely within the boundaries of a specific genre, and they have no intention of leaving those boundaries. And it's, I mean, that's extremely not interesting, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the plot device at the art of this book is, the, again, the, the plot device of the misplaced document, like the, the letter that shouldn't be read by a certain character and is read by that character, which Franzen already used in Freedom, and which is very much a stale narrative trope in the literary genre, as much as the it was all a dream trope is in like horror or fantasy or science fiction. Last week in my review of Moonglow, which by the way, as the, the more the days pass, the more I'm convinced it's an impossible masterpiece, it's really among Shaban's best. In my review of Moonglow, I said that John, um, Michael Shaban is uh, the best uh, Pinchonian dis uh, disciple alive today. I believe that at the beginning of his career, Jonathan Franzen too was a disciple of Pinchon and a great one because 27 City uses the best of Pinchon, the way he uses thriller uh, narrative devices within the, the, the boundaries of a literary novel, the way he uh, peoples his novels with so many different characters, the way he uses paranoia as a uh, way to reflect upon today's world, he uses all that stuff and it made the, all that stuff his. This 27 City is a Pinchonian novel, but doesn't read like a copycat of Pinchon at all. But later, in later novels, I have no idea what happened with Strong Motion, because I read it on a train, fell asleep, and woke up dressed like a sailor. But in later novels, such as The Corrections and uh, Freedom, which we can all like uh, mock Jonathan Franz and make fun of Jonathan Franz, but these, especially The Corrections, are kind of masterpieces that's impossible to deny. In these novels, he moved away from his beginnings and he evolved his own thing, of course, relying heavily on the tropes and canons of classic literature. In the process, he kind of became today's John Updike. And there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of people love John Updike, love his bad sex scenes, uh, all those novels about adultery and more adultery. I am not a fan of John Updike too much. I wasn't too much a fan of Purity. Let me know what you thought about the book, and especially if, like me, you are a Jonathan Franzen's fan, but not a die-hard fan, let me know if you actually uh, enjoyed this book a lot or didn't. I've talked with people, for instance, who love this book and didn't like Freedom very much. Uh, for me, it was quite the opposite. So, really, do let me know.
I should actually reread this book to get myself a more like a, a, a straighter reading experience and a more like well-formed opinion but that's not going to happen in the immediate future I can foresee mostly because again it was an unpleasant experience let me know what you thought about the book again thank you so much for watching once again guys I'll see you in the next one bye guys